For today's video, we're going to tear this down. This is a power meter that you'd see on your house, and this is one of the new smart power meters. So, it should be kind of interesting. I'm not sure if it's if Focus, if that's the brand, or up here it says Silver Spring Networks. I'm uh, not quite sure what the brand is, but um, yeah, this is what you'd find on the side of your house. Uh, kind of an interesting story of how I actually got this. Um, the person who gave this to me, the, the city they live in here in California, was an early adopter of these. They were a, basically a test program. The power company went around and installed these on all their houses long before they were generally rolled out here in California. And the first meter they installed in their house was causing problems. It kept tripping breakers and shutting things down. And so the tech came out and installed a second meter and um, that meter would act up as well several months in they had to have a tech come out again and Replace that meter now by the time he came out a second time to install um, They had come out with the generation 2 meters the generation 1 meters were causing a lot of problems like they were seeing and so the the tech the second time installed a generation 2 meter and When he left he literally just put this old generation 1 meter just left it on the ground um, now the person they called the power company several times and said, hey, your tech left this meter on the ground. Do you want it? And the, they never came back to claim it. It sat on the ground for years, and it's been out in the elements. And so, you know, this is basically just an old meter. They didn't want it back to the Generation 1. They probably don't even want it anyway. So um, that's how I came across it. They gave it to me, and so I figured I would go ahead and take it apart and see what's inside. Uh, should be an interesting teardown. Now, first off, I will say I'm not an electrical engineer, so the contents of this is going to be largely over my head. It's just going to be more of a, a peek around, see what's inside of it. Um, I've noticed on the back side here, so there are four terminals, which I didn't know what to expect um, on a house meter, like how many wires coming in. Like I'm wondering if one of them goes to ground, maybe one's 110 input, 220 input, or maybe it's two outputs and 110 in, one 220 in. I, I'm not sure how it's wired up, but maybe we'll see on the inside. Um, something else we should see. Uh, these smart meters all talk to each other wirelessly. And indeed, if you come up here, so there's some FCC ID numbers, and you should be able to Google that and get information like exactly what frequency. Um, they use to communicate and things like that. Now, one thing I've noticed, so right here, there's kind of a an opening in the plastic and the top of it, so I can find a good angle. I'm wondering if that's an IR port where a tech can come up and put a tool on the outside and communicate through that hole via IR to talk to the meter, I don't know. This is another port here, but there's, it looks like it's banana plugs. So this might be for diagnostics, but there's a plastic over it, so you couldn't access that anyway. So, yeah, let's go ahead and crack this open and see what it looks like on the inside. Well, the first level of disassembly went a lot easier than I thought. This outer dome is over here, and it literally twists like that and then lifts off. So you can quickly and easily access the meter without having to pull it off the wall. So that's definitely how they access these banana terminals if that's a diagnostics port. And then that there, which I thought might have been an IR port, there's actually a button there that you can push. Couldn't tell you what the button does, but there's a button there. So let's dig it apart further. Well, every step of the way, this seems to be a, an interesting disassembly. This part here, which was over here, was another twist and pull off to get it off. And then all these wires here were just pushed onto connectors on the board. So that separates the electronics here from kind of the inputs. Interestingly enough, looks like there's a motor in there. I'm not sure what the motor drives. So we'll have to get this base apart and get the circuit boards out of there and have a closer look at everything here. So inside this base, got a lot going on in here. Kind of interesting design. So up here at the top, on either side, those are got wires coming in here so this is clearly the input from the power company and one wire goes down here and the other strap 
comes up, goes through here, and then it's underneath here. Now right around here, there's a donut shape on here, and then coming out of the side of the donut is a cable, and that went up to the circuit board. And so what's going on here? So basically this right here is sucking or siphoning power, if you will, through inductance out of this. I'm guessing this is 220 coming in. So it's sucking a little bit of power up through here, and that's going up into here to power all these electronics. So that's how everything gets powered. So in the middle here, you obviously have this motor. And what that's doing, so either side, left and right, these have to be the terminals going into your house. And I'm guessing um, this is kind of like a safety feature or cutoff, and it can turn that motor, which there's a, a cam in here, it's, it's not perfect, perfectly circular, and as that motor turns, it would pull the, the sweeper arms, you know, push it out and break contact. And so that just goes down in there. So basically by turning that motor, they can physically disconnect power from going through into your house. So that's probably some sort of safety measure that they can do that. Um, this strap over here has got a green wire coming through. So that should be ground. And then this should be the hot coming in over here. So another thing I noticed on the back side here, there's a, a switch or just some sort of plastic lever and I'm guessing this is a manual way of engaging or disengaging the, the con contacts here to allow power through. So that's why there's a motor in there. It's, it's a, it's, I'm guessing, a safety feature to allow physical connect disconnect of power into your house. With each step of disassembly, I think I'm figuring out more and more about how this smart meter works. Um, so here's the circuit board, and I've got the wireless card up there, but previously I stated that this donut here was where they siphon power off to run the circuitry down here, and I now think that that's not true. I think it's basically this gray wire here, and then this other side, which would be the ground connector, this blue wire here. I'm guessing these, it's the same power that runs into your house, and I'm guessing that's what powers the electronics, and this right here is the sense to be able to tell how much current is going through here so that basically the power company knows how much to charge you. And this answers one of the questions I had. You know, obviously any electronics like this, it takes power. And I was wondering, is the power company, are they footing the bill for the electricity this uses or are you paying for the electricity that their meter uses? And since it's drawing power on basically the house side of this toroid right here that means you are getting charged to run this now it's not going to be much i mean this right here this meter probably draws maybe a dollar or two of electricity in a year but you are paying for it it's not the power company paying for it clearly by the design so uh, some interesting things going on here i mean first off you see some really big capacitors on here and i will say they have spared no expense, so all the caps on here, they're all Nichicon capacitors, with the exception of this one over here, which is United Chemicon, and those are good brands. They definitely wanted to this to last. They don't want to have to tech come out and replace this in a couple of years just because capacitors went bad. Um, you also notice a really big mauve here. It's a metal oxide varistor and that protects against over over voltages so if there's power problems on the wire a lightning strike in the air or something like that in theory this will blow and protect the rest of it um, there was on the front of it there was a switch and if i flip it over here i didn't know what the switch did well it's closed whatever that is i don't know if that's supposed to be a switch, a switch that they can tell when the lid is closed down on it because this particular model it wouldn't work. The switch didn't come in contact with the lid, but close something or other. They also have pads here for reset, test, and scroll. But even though the pads are there, there weren't buttons corresponding on the outside of the unit, so those features aren't used by this particular model. So these cuts in the board here. These would be high voltage isolation slots. So it basically provides, you know, if they've got a high voltage on either side here, makes it harder for it to arc across. So that's a, a safety feature there. Let's see 
see what else we got going on here. I did notice, so on the front panel, I thought there was a connection for two banana plugs, and turns out that wasn't right. Those are not banana jacks in there. Those are actually LEDs soldered in there, or my guess is one of them is an LED and one of them is an IR receiver, and so it's, it's still for communication, but it's done through IR, so you have a, a corresponding unit that just sits over top of it, and they talk back and forth, and that way it can be a sealed unit, and they can still do diagnostics on there without actually having to open the unit up. So all in all kind of interesting. I did notice there's an unusual capacitor here. It's a very low value, 0.22. Oh, sorry, it's not microfarads, it's farads. Okay, so that's, that's definitely what I thought it is. This here is a super capacitor. Wow, 0.22 farads. That is a lot of potential juice in there. I mean, this one capacitor right here probably could store the juice of all these others and then some. So that's, that's interesting. You don't see a lot of supercapacitors in standard electronics use because of the sheer amount of power they can hold. I'll have to Google. I'm curious how much that part right there costs because that one's probably not cheap. And some of these other capacitors, they're big too, big physically in size and I mean 6800 microfarads is a, a good size capacitor. So yeah, interesting board to look at the so this board, as far as I can tell, all this board does is the wireless network you know, comes in over this header connector here. So they had a corresponding header here, and the board's connected together. And then there were metal cans over these two, which I've taken off to peek inside. But there's basically nothing on the backside, some test points. It does have a MAC address listed on there. but. So if you come up here, so clearly you can, this was designed to be able to operate with external antenna if you need it. Um, if you've ever worked with a laptop PCI network card, um, you probably see this connector before. I don't know what it's called, but it's basically a very tiny connector that you can plug an antenna into. Or it's got a built-in antenna, so one wire comes out of here, goes to this first optional connector, and then it goes on to, so this here is half of the antenna, and the other wire comes out, goes to that connector along, and then to this solder joint here. So these are the two halves of an antenna, and all antennas will have two connections on them. Um, couldn't say exactly what this type of antenna is. I mean, it's kind of a dipole shape over here, but it's hanging off on one side, so here's the ground side, and here's the active side, but yeah, there's the Wi-Fi connection on it. There's, I think it's an LED on the side there, but yeah, there's the inside of a smart meter for your house. It's definitely not what I was expecting inside, but all in all, it's, it, it all makes sense. It's not hard to figure out. There's, it was interesting that most of the airspace in here, it was just taken up. It was airspace. There wasn't anything in there. I mean, the lid was pretty short on this, and the circuit board doesn't take up much space. So a lot of the air room in here was just void, but yeah. Well, there you go. Hopefully you, hopefully you found the inside of a smart meter interesting. Thanks for watching.